Hello guys and welcome to another video. If you're new to my channel, my name is Johan and I post videos about my animals. So if you find that interesting, please consider hitting that subscribe button for more videos like this. And in this video, I'm gonna do a setup for a leopard gecko and it's gonna be a bioactive setup. And I know it's a big controversial discussion about leopard geckos and loose substrate, but I also feel like for every year that passes, people are getting more and more accepting to having leopard geckos on loose substrate because more and more research showed that leopard geckos die with impaction, but it doesn't die off impaction. And that is because if you keep the leopard gecko healthy and you feed it right and it doesn't have any problems, it will be able to digest a small amount of sand or dirt or whatever it licks up because that's what they do in the wild. So if you keep your leopard gecko healthy, you won't have any problems, at least from my experience, to keep a leopard gecko on loose substrate. I've been doing it for years now and it's been fine. But I also know that I am not an expert and I know there might be someone here watching this that have another experience. So please leave a comment down below if you don't share this experience or if you don't share what I'm saying right now because I would love to learn stuff and this is just what I've learned but I know there's other people do in other ways and have other experience. So I would love to know what experience you have. So please share that in the comments. But we're gonna get into this setup because I've been talking too much already and I don't wanna lose people watching this because you came here to watch the setup, not watching me talk how you should keep your leopard gecko. So we're gonna get into the setup. I'm gonna add the substrate. And for the substrate, I use a mix with pea. I added a little bit more sand for this setup. I have leaf litter. I have decaying wood. I have charcoal. Uh, I think it's activated charcoal, I think it's called. Um, I don't have a video of me adding that, but it's in there. I added forest bark. What else did I add? Um, I know I added, I don't know how to say it. It's the excavator clay or whatever you call it. Like the thing that makes everything like hard. But I didn't add a lot of it because I don't want this to become hard. But it's going to help it bring it together a little bit. So I added that into the substrate. And I think that is it. Oh no, I also added sphagnum moss. So that's how I have my bioactive setup. Um, as you can see, I'm adding a layer for the bottom. So that's what I like to do. I always add a little layer at the bottom so I have some substrate to work with when I add the decor in there. And when you do a bioactive setup, you wanna use a lot of substrate. But from my experience, when you use the Exoterra, do not fill up the substrate to the ventilation holes because the isopods and cleanup crew will get out. I learned the hard way. so. Uh, that's the tip for me, but what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna add substrate onto the back and keep it higher up in the back and lower in the front. Because you also want a spot where the substrate is kind of low because I'm gonna add a heat mat under it and that's not gonna penetrate this thick layer of substrate. So I'm gonna use one side where it's not that much substrate and one side where it's a lot of substrate. And on the side where there's not a lot of substrate, I'm gonna put the hot hide and the humid hide. And I'm gonna get into that more later in this video. All right, so I'm gonna start adding the decor. I really don't know how I want it. So I might just do a time lapse when I set it up and I'm gonna be back when it's set up because I really don't know how I'm gonna set it up. All right, so I'm back already. I'm gonna put the hot hide right here. I'm probably gonna add another hide in the front right here, but uh, before I cover this, I'm gonna put the humid hide right here because the heat mat is gonna be right under here. And I'm gonna put some sphagnum moss in this one. And then I'm just gonna put this on like this. And the heat mat is gonna be under this and warm this up. And the sphagnum moss and the water is gonna be in here is gonna evaporate up. And that's gonna make this cave become super humid. And you want to have a humid hide so the leopard gecko can go in here, have a drink or have a shed or just if it needs an environment where the humidity is higher, you can decide to go in here. So that's where you want that there. I'm gonna get the sphagnum moss and then I'm gonna keep decorating the enclosure. So I'll see you soon.
All right, so that is the setup. I am really happy how it looks. I think it looks really natural and I think the leopard gecko is gonna love it. There is a hot hide right here. I might end up adding another hide right here because I think I want more options for a hot hide on the hot side. But as it is now, I'm just gonna keep it like this. But again, I might add one. But hot hide right here. There's a moist hide right here. There's a hide in this cork bark. There's a hide in this cork bark. You can hide under here. There's a little hide right here. There's a hide under this uh, cork bark. And there's another hide up here. And another thing that I'm gonna add that doesn't really look good, I might add some other bowls for that, is uh, the food dish, which looks not good at all. And I'm gonna place that right there. Uh, so the leopard gecko can actually stand up on here and eat it because these are amazing, but they're a little bit too tall. So I always try to place it next to an object so the leopard gecko can get up on something and then eat from there. And that has been working perfectly fine for now. And another thing you want to add is a calcium source. And I use these crushed eggshells. It looks like this. And these have the same effect as calcium powder. So instead of pouring a bowl of calcium powder, you can pour a bowl of crushed uh, coral. I said eggshells. It's crushed coral. I think you can use crushed eggshells as well. You can for isopods. But anyways, I use crushed uh, coral. I'm pouring that into the same bowl as the food dish. And uh, I'm gonna place that, um, yeah, I don't know where. I might just place it on the other side right here. I guess they blend into the enclosure a bit since they are orange, but yeah, again, I don't, I don't like that at all. And the last thing I'm gonna add as decor is the water dish. And I really like these Exeterra ones, so I'm gonna place that right here where the humid height is. Uh, so when I spray the humid height, I can just spray the water bowl right outside, so. I think that's gonna look good and uh, I'm really happy how it looks. But it's not really finished. I mean, the decoration is finished, but there's one thing that we're gonna add and that's gonna be the last thing we add and that is the cleanup crew. And I heard a bunch of different stuff that you can use for cleanup crew. I'm gonna put some springtails in there. They will probably not survive in the whole enclosure because they need moisture to survive. So they're gonna probably survive around this area right here where the water dish is moist hide in this area, right? But I'm also gonna put down some powder blue isopods. Uh, it's, a, it's a Cuban isopod. And they're gonna roam around the whole enclosure. They're gonna clean up for the leopard gecko. I still have to go in and spot clean. And eventually when the isopods settle in the enclosure, I still have to spot clean because they're not gonna eat the urates from the leopard gecko. So yeah, I still have to spot clean. So even though you have a bioactive setup, you still have to do maintenance on the tank. It's not gonna be like you set up a terrarium and then just leave it. Yeah, you still do maintenance. I know you probably know that, but I'm just gonna mention that. But we're gonna add the cleanup crew. I'm gonna add the isopods first. I'm just gonna pour them in right here. I also forgot to mention that I'm adding another isopod. And the other isopod I'm adding, which is in here with the part of blue, is the dwarf white isopod. And the dwarf white isopod is a burrowing isopod and they're gonna live below the substrate. So the powder orange is gonna roam around on top of the substrate, might become a little snack for the leopard gecko. And the dwarf white is gonna be below the substrate and moving around the substrate and that's gonna help the plants. And yes, the whole terrarium in general. So I'm gonna add those in here. And finally, I'm adding the springtails. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna put Nugget, which is one of my leopard geckos in here, and we're gonna film Nugget explore the terrarium, and then I'm gonna remove Nugget from the enclosure because I don't want her to move in there just yet because I want the cleanup crew to settle in, find their hiding spot, and uh, maybe just wait a few weeks before I actually put a leopard gecko in there so the cleanup crew have established their colonies because if I put the leopard gecko in there now, she might just eat up all the isopods, so we don't want that. So I'm just gonna put her in there for this video so I can get some footage of the terrarium first of all because I wanna get a better view for the terrarium right now because you probably have just seen it from this angle, this whole video, and uh, I wanna show a better angle. So I'm gonna do that, then I'm gonna remove her, and then I will be back for the outro. So I'll see you guys soon.
All right, guys, so that's gonna wrap the video. I don't know how long this video is, but if you stay this long, uh, you probably like this video. So please go down and like this video. Leave a comment what you think about the enclosure, which I was mentioning earlier in this video because I'm really curious about what you think about it. And then I just wanna end it by saying thank you so much for watching all the way to the end. It helps me out a lot. Thank you for leaving that like, and I will see you in the next video. Thank <laughs> you.